All right, so. Oh, I'm going to call the committee to hold it order. Um, I'm going to forego the Pledge of Allegiance, but we do need to do roll call again. Sure. Mrs. Aubrey. Here. Mrs. Bell. Here. Mrs. Is, I'm sorry, Mrs. Godfrey. I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Jared. Here. Mrs. Leone. Here. Mrs. Olson. Here. Mr. Scott. Here. Mr. Sherwood. Here. And Mrs. Thompson. Here. Okay. So um, announcements. We, agenda edits. We don't have any for this. Um, this. Um, agenda. Um, there will be an executive session following the meeting to discuss personnel. Um, and I skipped over the public participation procedures. They're the same as a couple minutes ago, except that during the Committee of the Whole, we have comment periods after every section of the agenda. And we, um, it's now time for the superintendent's report. Mr. Dr. Cooper. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, last week was uh, recognition of National Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, we celebrated that, uh, made it a point to visit all district buildings. I went classroom to classroom to thank our professional staff for <coughs> what they do for our students and families in our community. Um, also, just a reminder to the board that we have many end of year events happening at each one of our buildings as this school year comes to the close. Um, including transition days uh, for our students moving from one building to the next, um, music events, awards, ceremonies, um, and et cetera. So uh, I encourage if you get a chance to uh, go out to those and visit those, it'd be great. Um, professional staff um, are making preparations for the moves taking place this summer as we right size our district buildings uh, so that our contract service providers can make the transition for staff as soon as is possible. So uh, that's, that's in the works. Um, as we approach the conclusion of the school year and uh, into the summer months. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Cooper. Um, moving on to the um, student board reports. Okay, for the primary center, uh, academically the end of year assessments are coming up. Extracurriculars, students are participating in a fun run fundraiser to support the school. Culturally, this month's pause reward is a picnic and all grades are taking part in a field day. For the Intermediate Center, uh, academically, all grades are participating in English and Math PSSAs and the fourth grade is taking the Science PSSAs. Extracurriculars, uh, fourth and fifth grade has, to, uh, has their final chorus and band concert of the year. Culturally, there will be fourth and fifth grade recognition. For the middle school, academically, students are taking their PSSAs, map testing, class finals, and eighth graders are taking keystones. Students are also learning about job applications and FTC. Extracurriculars, uh, the TSA members went to their state's competition in Seven Springs, Pennsylvania, and music students attended music in the parks in Hershey. Uh, culturally, the school dance happens and Great Moving on to the high school, academics. The high school is currently undertaking EP testing and will be conducting finals within the next two weeks. Extracurriculars, the music program traveled through Virginia to compete at Music in the Parks. FBLA competed at the state competition and has a national qualifier. Student government elected new officers for the 2022-2023 school year. Uh, culturally, Special Olympics will be held on May 18th. The JRGC will be working with the Virtual American Legion to host a rock march from Gibraltar to Reading on, Reading, or on May 14th in support of homeless veterans within the county. Uh, there will be several different class activities for seniors coming up in the next few weeks, including the senior class trip, senior breakfast, award ceremony, and scholarship night. Uh, we also have the student government report for you all. Um, this is on behalf of the president, my Papo. Good evening, Danny Boone Student School Board members. Danny Boone School Board members. Below is a summary of the spring's past and future accomplishments and activities of the uh, student government. However, we would again like to thank those who have made these attempts possible. Thank you to our administration at the high school and the district level <coughs> for being supportive and helpful throughout the endeavors of this year. 
and to you to the school board for always trying to put the needs of our students first. We'd also like to thank our high school staff for helping us have a safe and enjoyable school year. In the past events, the Spirit Weeks, Winter Spirit Week, and Spring Spirit Week included our first prep rally in three years. Uh, fun Fridays, random spirit days, uh, about every fri other Friday. Um, food drive collected for the county food bank helping harvest included a raffle of prizes for those who donated, including a Wild Wild gift card, Dunkin' Donuts uh, gift card, uh, shaving Mr. Spore's head and Mr. Bailey's head, uh, free admissions to the home sports games for fall 2022. Uh, committee work. Food service committee added new vegan and vegetarian options to the cafeteria menu. Technology committee worked with the technology department to discuss issues and potential developments in technology at our school the Judicial Committee reviewed and updated our Constitution and Bylaws. Scholarship Committee selected scholarship recipients Brianna Lee, Riley McAtee, Olivia Ford, and Amy Shaker. Elections, student government elections held Tuesday, May 3rd. Results President Lauren Massigill, Vice President, Vice President Grace Haberker, uh, Secretary Taylor Kasner, Treasur Treasurer Delvin Zid. Um, and under other blood drives, that will be held tomorrow, May 10th. Uh, band and choir, spring concerts, May 12th. Spring sports wrap up. And graduation commencement, June 3rd. Thank you for an enjoyable and successful school year. We look forward to making plans for the 2022-2023 school year. Additionally, as many of you, as many of you already know, this is my last school board meeting as a student representative, and I would like to take time to thank the school board our district principals, students, and staff for the wonderful opportunities I had as a student representative. It was a special experience getting to travel through the district again and see all my former teachers. I would like to draw special attention to how far the district has come in the last two years with COVID protocol and allowing our students to have a mostly normal school year again. As a graduating senior, I could not ask for anything more out of my district my senior year. Lastly, I would like to congratulate Chloe and Sam on making it through the year as junior representatives and how much time and coordination it takes to be a representative. And I know we both will do an outstanding job next year as student representatives. Thank you. Let me ask a question. Is Chef Olivi here at the next meeting in June? Yes, you will. Okay. Um, well, look, welcome in advance. But um, so I, I thought this was probably going to be your last meeting, and I wanted to say, you know, um, one of the reasons we used to have the um, the student board reports um, buried in buried in the committee of the whole. And one of the reasons that we moved them up was because our meetings had been getting longer and longer. Everybody knows that, and um, since uh, COVID. Um, sent us all home and doing these meetings on Zoom and then came back. You know, the meetings had gotten longer. Um, they had gotten um, um, more, more difficult and then, and then a little easier again. Um, and uh, so we did that so that the students didn't feel that they had to sit through all of it if they didn't want to. But um, the, the, um, these student representatives usually stay till the bitter end unless they have something else pressing on their time. Um, I appreciate their dedication. Um, and um, uh, Luke said, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Geringer, um, has, has been uh, for, you know, um, representing us, not just ably, not just here, but also um, with the, the Student Senate in Harrisburg. And uh, we, do, we do appreciate his student leadership. We're looking forward to see what you do in the future. So thank you. And uh, we will be happy to see you in Chloe next. Yeah, this, this so, all right, um, moving on to finance. Um, finance um, a, to a, and oh, I, I just said that, and now you're going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you at graduation. <laughs> I'll see you at graduation. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, so um, two A one through six. 
Um, anybody have comments, questions, concerns? Most of them are routine um, renewals. Um, the HVAC system we discussed at the Facilities Transportation Committee meeting last month. Um, anybody have any comments, questions, concerns? Sure, we're not voting today, so um, so oh. yeah, and you have to so you have to abstain from I'm six. Have to abstain from Absolutely, um, and um, you gotta tell us why. Oh, it's not important. Well, oh yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, so um, at the beginning of next meeting, um, Bucky will make a copy of. There's a sheet we have to fill out to include with the minutes. He'll make that available to you at the beginning of next meeting. Um, so we'll make sure that we vote for those separately. Any other concerns? Any public comment on finance? Um, moving on to programs. Um, um, we've got some policies. Moving toward approval. Um, and the rest of these are uh, job descriptions. Yes, job descriptions that are being updated. Um, any comments, questions, concerns from the board on any of that? Any public comment? Um, personnel. Um, got two retirements, three retirements, resignations, um, a bunch of leaves, <clears throat> a bunch of appointments. Um, the, a lot of the appointments are for the summer, summer session. Um, any comments, questions, concerns from the board on any of that? Um, any public comment on personnel? Um, presentations by board members? Mr. Scott. I have nothing to report. Okay. Um, I will say that uh, most of the board received at least four um, emails about Um, most of the um, most of the board received at least four emails about um, the transportation um, uh, RFP and uh, um, the uh, contract. So, um, intermediate Berks County Intermediate Unit, Mr. Jarek. The uh, the IU celebrated uh, a president celebrating 50 years of uh, the existence. Uh, was well attended by many. Good. With legislators, um, some of the guest executive directors, uh, a good event. Uh, and the rest of the, uh, that was followed by the regular meeting, basically just approving some standard contracts and things like that, nothing else of the nature. Okay. Any um, questions for Mr. Jerick on DCIU? Um, BCTC board, Ms. Thompson. We met on April 27th. Um, they have their highest enrollment yet for the 2022 2023 school year. Um, 19 of their programs are at 100% capacity. Um, they have their new student orientation on May 4th and 5th. Uh, senior recognition is at San Arena on May 31st. Um, they're going on summer hours June 6th through August 12th, which um, is four days a week, so we close on Fridays. Um, Finance and budget, all, the, all 16 school districts uh, approved the budget. Uh, next meeting is May 25th. Okay, any questions for Ms. Thompson? Um, Mr. Geringer gave us his uh, student government report um, at the top of the meeting because he had things to do. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, um, legislative report from Mr. Strobel. <coughs> Um, we have a reading on 412.22. Um, it started with um, um, state level priority areas, education funding, and um, federal level priorities, just kind of give us an overview. Um, we went into um, uh, introducing the guest speaker, Carrie Madonna, and um, it was a quite an education on the democratic process um, in terms of you know voter demographics, presidential approval rating, um, impacting voter issues. Um, there was a lot of meat there, and so we got done that. And then the only other thing I would add to that would be um, more conversation regarding um, uh, funding for charter schools. It's always a topic um, that's talked about. So, and then the next meeting is September twelfth. Okay. 
Any questions for Mr. Strobel? <coughs> any other board reports? Okay, any public comment on any of that? Um, one thing I did want to say. I always want to say just one more thing. Um, student government report, the student government report, Luke gave that um, for Ms. Cockle, and um, uh, she's the president of, this, of the exiting senior class. Um, sh she had recently um, was our second student to, yes. to uh, she was our second student to, um, before she graduates from here, she just graduated from uh, RAC with an associate's degree um, in do it due to our dual enrollment program. She's, um, she's this, we had a student that graduated with that who was also in the room uh, last year, um, Ms. Ms. Mad Madeline Albright. Madeline, Madison. 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 I know. Madeline well, Albright's a totally be, different person. Well, she was supposed to be uh, Madeline. <laughs> and I was having her, and then I was like, oh. I don't want to name her yeah, I know. So, um, congratulations to Maya. I did want to mention that because that, that's a that's an amazing achievement. Mm -hmm. um, so, enrollment numbers are. I did call for public comment, right? Nobody stood up, right? Um, I did call for enrollment. Enrollment numbers um, are in the are in there for us to review. Any questions from the board on those? any public comment on enrollment numbers. Curriculum and Instruction Committee, Ms. Albright. Um, our last meeting, uh, Mr. Flowers presented his um, presentation on equity awareness. <clears throat> Over That's right. And um, next meeting is uh, the 23rd. Yeah. Um, any, any public comment on that? Oh, any questions from the board also? Um, curriculum, extracurricular committee. Yes, we were not able to hold our meeting tonight, but I did get an update from Mrs. Schmidt. Um, spring sports are winding down for the high school. Boys and girls across each have one game left. Neither team will go to <laughs> postseason despite growing a lot this year with young players. Baseball has one game remaining and sits on the district bubble. Softball has three games remaining, and they will not make postseason. Boys volleyball has completed their varsity schedule and have one final JV tournament rank remaining. While the varsity did not make postseason, many players double roster, so the tournament will be a great experience. Track will attend a last chance meet today to qualify a few more athletes for the county championships this weekend. Boys tennis finished with the most wins in program history, 13 wins. They also had two athletes compete for their county flight championship. Evan Miller won the flight two county championship. Owen Bloom came in second in the flight five match. Jared Miller came in third in the flight three tournament. This is the first time Daniel Boone Tennis has made it to championship Monday. Sam Shank was the first ever district tennis representative from Daniel Boone. He completed the last Friday in Hershey. With testing and weather, just a slew of reasons to delay, middle school sports will still have two weeks remaining in their schedule. Excellent. It's been, uh, for all schools, not just ours, it's been a long road. Um, um, bringing up the uh, numbers of participation since COVID. Um, so having a good, a good year where almost every event took place has been really nice, especially at the spring. Um, any questions for, um, any questions for um, uh, Ms. Bell on that? Any public comment? Okay, I have lost my face. There we go. Um, <coughs> doo -doo. Facilities and transportation. Um, we discussed the library security gate. Mm -hmm. um, it's into the library. Um, we're going to be getting um, uh, pricing for that. Um, the doors are finished, um, and cleaning should be uh, should be finished on Wednesday. And the library will be out out there for us. And we did discuss uh, three companies for the RFP update. <coughs> three companies for next month review. Um, we recommended that three-month lock-in for fuel. 
and for transportation, a lot of conversation, but at the end we pushed forward the recommendation to go with Chris transportation. Right. And our next facilities transportation committee meeting is June 6th? June 6th. Okay. Any questions for um, Mr. Schroeder? <coughs> Any public comment? Okay. Um, finance committee, that is me. Um, so um, we only had one major, um, we had our meeting on April 25th. Um, we only had one major thing that we needed to discuss. We needed, um, we needed food um, equipment service. Um, we needed food equipment for uh, the high school and the, and the high school um, needed um, two new items, um, buffet warmer and display merchandiser. And then the whole school district needed more serving trays. Um, we um, uh, voted to um, move forward um, with recommending um, getting those items. It was voted on by, <coughs> during the regular voting meeting on April 25th and, and voted, voted to approve. So, um, and our next meeting is the, I don't know, the 13th, is that right? Yeah, uh, yeah. 13th. Yeah, okay. Next meeting is June 13th. And it'll be all about the budget, I'm pretty sure. Um, any uh, comments, questions, concerns from the board? Any public comment on the Finance Committee? Uh, moving on to policy review. We had a brief meeting this evening, um, <clears throat> meeting uh, over three policies, 338, 3381, and 339. They've been moved into uh, first reading. Um, our next meeting is June 6th, and before I get off, uh, we have uh, we had three policies also moved into second reading. Right. Um, something I always forget to say. So uh, our next meeting again is June 6th. That's all I have. Okay. Any comments, questions, concerns for um, Mr. Scott from the board? Any public comment on public policy, the policy review committee? Um, Seeing none, okay, moving on to technology, Mr. Schroep. Um, yeah, we had a meeting on um, Monday, April 25th, and the, um, there, was, uh, there was no major updates to the infrastructure planning, up, uh, infrastructure planning uh, but the phone system um, swap is in process right now. Um, district internet connection, um, they're investigating partnerships with the Lancaster Lebanon IU for a firewall, mm -hmm. which eventually will provide an element um, that would eliminate any bandwidth issues moving forward. Um, we, we won't have any equipment to take care of them through them. Uh, we're still investigating that. Um, there was no update for student information systems. Um, project updates for summer of 22, um, updating a lot of PCs to Windows 11, updating and preparing all these student iPads, creating and syncing all student accounts, and continuing to work on cybersecurity. Um, there was no integrated learning update. Okay. Okay, any any um, comments, questions, concerns from the board for uh, Mr. Strobel? Any oh, under technology? Yes. Okay. going to go ahead and, and I, we will we will include this in the response if I say anything wrong Brett's going to correct me I hope um, we did look into it we found out that because we would be selling an actual physical thing we would have to deal with sales tax and register with the state to do that it was discussed at several several technology and finance committee meetings along the road whether or not that would be something that was feasible and 
it was determined that it it was it, it was a it was too much of an onus on us to um, it would have been it would have been a significant issue for the for the district to take on the ability to sell things back. Well, I necessarily wasn't asking for you guys to okay. buy, buy back and sell them. It would be nice to allow the students, especially students who really can't afford computer systems going off to their next stage life. Mm -hmm. If it's all, it's the way I remember <laughs> the meeting, this is years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I have a pretty good memory for stupid things. But no, it's uh, fine. it was very inexpensive. Uh, to buy these computers back. So why wouldn't you try to figure out a way that the students could purchase them back for themselves so they can continue in their next stage of life using it as college? You mean not using us as a middleman, just finding a different way to get that, get Apple with the student to make that happen? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. yeah. They don't always, the lease doesn't always expire when the students leave. That's the other piece that would have to be coordinated. So. But but we can we can Absolutely. look into that and find the details. Might not be their exact one because of the rotation. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll look into it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other um, comments on technology? Um, moving on to old business. Um, the minutes from the twenty fifth. Any comments, questions, concerns from the board? Public comment. New business, oh yes, new business. Um, um, the, um, our um, term limit, uh, well our term for our current school board treasurer is going to be expiring on June 30th. <coughs> who is, happens to be Mr. Strobel. And um, I have not discussed with him yet if he's willing to take that on again, and if, um, and, but if anybody else is also interested, um, speak up um, anytime between now and when we vote on it. Um, but we do need to have somebody do it. Um, so, uh -huh. so, <laughs> so, um, so um, it, I don't know. Does anybody want to discuss that right now? We can. Don't all jump at once. Um, so. Um, so that will have that that will have either a name or two names, and then we'll vote um, by the next meeting. Um, any um, any comments from the public on treasurer for the next year? Um, and now it's time for presentations by the public on any issue. My dad. Hancock, 830 Geiger Town Voters. I'm calling to uh, give my opinion on the bus situation. Uh, I remember not too long ago when we were building our new stadium and the school district was $7 million in a deficit and they had to try to figure out how to close that gap. And that gap went from $7 million one year, the next million was after they fixed their budget, the next year it was four. Then I was three, it was several years for a multi-million dollar deficit. Um, the teacher's contract was kind of frozen because no one could agree. And I remember both these school, both these school bus companies were asked to help save the programs at the Andy New School District. They helped save the sports program they helped save the music program. They helped save some of the programs like foreign language. They helped save employment because they broke their contract and renegotiated step by step and cut their profits in order to help the Andrew School District. And why? Because they're part of our community. That's a, that's a pretty significant thing for a company to do. It's a pretty stand-up at the time. When you're dealing with a new company, you're not going to have that. You're not going to have um, them paying a huge property tax that they're paying. I mean, it's pretty significant, the school tax that these two groups are paying the school district. Let alone the people in the community that they hire, they give them insurance, they give them a decent salary, 
you have to consider that also. The other thing, dealing with a new company, a new company can go bankrupt. Just picture three years into your contract and gas is seven, eight dollars for diesel fuel. Do you, and I know this happens to the school district several times, you, 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 can, you can sue them, but what do you get from the bankrupt company? You don't get anything. It's just a write-off and the taxpayers suffer from that. So you might look at saving a little bit of money, but at the end of the day, what are you doing to the community? There's a lot of people who are paying taxes that don't have kids, and they're saying, what is this school district doing for our community? Well, at least the school district's hiring locally. They're using local businesses. They're doing things that improves our community. So with that being said, I, I really think you should reconsider. I mean, they did bail us out multiple years, and they took a hit, and they were willing to do that for us. So, you know, that's, that's all I would like to say. Thank you. Thank you.
I did have wrote down here what Edward R. Murrow said to uh, a former senator in our history. Do you not have a sense of decency? The red light's up. I then switched over to Steve. I was a, a school bus driver, coach driver, limo driver. I've worked for five different school bus contractors, four different school districts. I've held every position from a bus driver, instructor, safety, uh, assistant supervisor, HR, pretty much everything I've done in the bus industry. Um, I do know, I know good and bad about both these companies, which I'm not going to discuss here. Price. Um, they recently took over Phoenixville. That was one place where I started out as an assistant supervisor. I have to say that I have, I'm still friendly with a lot of those employees, and they are all happy with Price. I'm not trying to sway you one way or another, but everybody's been negative. I just want to know what I know firsthand. I've always heard that, I've only heard positives about Price having taken over the Phoenixville contract. The transportation director down there at Phoenixville is Lacey Edgar. I used to work with her hand in hand before she became a transportation director. And I know she will gladly answer any questions that you might have about Price and working with them as a school district. Um, and other than that, it's a tough call. Yes, they did with us for years. My kids rode their buses. My mother-in-law drove for Wayne for 45 years. And she retired a few years ago. I was with Wayne for eight years, 12 years. <laughs> so, you know, I, it's a tough call for you. Um, Price is new. They have the reputation. You have to look at a lot of things. I'll also say safety plays a factor, too. You can look on the Federal Motor Carrier website and find out what their safety ratings are of all the companies because Having worked for a very large company, I was with Wolfington for eight years. I'm very familiar with safety ratings due to my position there. Um, and that, that does play a factor. That will give you any type of violations that companies have. Um, it's not all about dollars. Sometimes it's about safety too. So now I've given you some homework to do. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I live at 1180 Old Airport Road, Douglasville. Um, I was just wondering when you were talking about the reputation of Christ. Um, we see in an article that one of the other drivers showed me. It says Senator Marty Flynn calls for change of his grant and school bus district contract um, mishandling. And this article involves Christ transportation. Are you aware of that at all? You read it. You read it? I did. I read it. Okay. Has it been discussed with the other people? or? Did... I've been discussing with them, yeah. Well, okay. Can I just can yes. I Thank you.
like to point out that it also was mentioned that they have several districts. We always dedicated our whole focus on Daniel Boone. Where do you think your Daniel Boone's going to fall when they're busy with all their other districts? <laughs> I can tell you. So as board members, I would encourage you to really do your homework. I appreciate you pushed off the vote. Thank you. But I would encourage you to use this time to learn and understand what your role is as elected officials and to do the right thing. Lastly, I think you all need and owe a huge amount of gratitude to these two men who dedicated their entire lives to this district. Now that would sound dramatic under any other circumstances. I understand that. That sounds really out there. They started with these buses when they were little boys. And they have grown up with these, with, I learned, and grew very, very successful businesses. So I would encourage you to keep that in mind and someday show your gratitude. And lastly, I will just say, Kathleen, I know you wanted us out five years ago. You just may get your wish this time. Thank you. if you do decide to go with Christ and they can't come up with the facility. Then what happens? Do we renegotiate or do they come in with the side deal? Or what do we do now? What happens then? I'm curious. I don't know. Do you, do you um, just to let you know, when um, I did answer um, Mr. Cockle's question. I answered the wrong question. I didn't answer the question he was asking, but I did try to answer his question. But normally, if there's any questions asked during this part of the meeting, as opposed to during a committee meeting, we take down the questions and we post them on the website. Um, we are going to do, because some a lot of these have to do with the transportation, we will try to get them done I by, did, I by did ask the same day. question earlier tonight in the transportation meeting, so it, it will be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it'll be on the website. Yeah, um, hopefully by Wednesday. You can up, please. You can Oh, that was nice, Jimmy. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Just Jimmy, have one so question. Right. Yes, sir. Did you ever go out and buy a new car and you shop around with different dealerships and the salesman promises of the world they're going to give you everything? You get back for service and they suck. So you go back to the old dealership where you had good service, good uh, rapport and everything, and they bend over backwards and they do what you want. <coughs> and they're great, person, great people to deal with. And the last couple of years we've had heard so much about transparency in the government. I don't think we have too much transparency here. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Megan Colton. I live at 142 Meadows High Drive. Having a lot of anxiety right now. Um, so, I am the mother of a kindergarten and a third grader. I also, the past year, have been working. New roads, and I gotta say, throughout the years of the school district, we all hear the bus stories and all the stuff going on the bus. And I never put my kid on the bus until this year. And I gotta say, working for New Roads, I am absolutely wowed by their commitment to our children. That if a child is displaced or half days, we all hear it. There's parents that aren't there. They're working. Stuff happens. These people behind me will be on the phone right away or send out a van themselves going into a van and pick up these kids and make sure that they are safe. And that is, it wowed me. And I love getting to know the New Roads family. <clears throat> Every morning, 
I see all of our bus kids, by kids sometimes included, they get up before 6 o'clock to come ride the buses with us. Now, these kids are actually excited coming to the bus depot because not only, yes, they get to ride the buses, but this family here make them feel so welcome that they give out gifts to them, they are very gracious to their employees, and even our children say that <clears throat> my kids actually beg to wake up early to come to me to ride the bus in the morning, but I do leave them home because they're pains in the butts, but, you know, but I gotta say that I, a name will be just said over the radio, and they know exactly who you are talking about. I have some concerns as a mother that a company coming out of Paxitani, they're not going to know my kids' names. I, I don't even think they're going to bother to know my kids' names, as I respect them and them coming in. But there are numerous just proved to me over and over how amazing they are and to work with. Also, I would like to, sorry. <clears throat> So during the pandemic, there's a nationwide shortage of drivers. Um, New Roads have shown that they've consistently been bringing our kids to school. They have jumped in the buses themselves. If we are sick, I was out with COVID for a moment. They took care of my bus run. And they have never hindered in that. They were always consistent as every other district that we hear that they don't have bus drivers, that they're paying parents to bring their kids to school. We should be very gracious that we had people who were always very consistent with that with us. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Huh? Reach it. <laughs> Listen, I want that. Okay? I want that. I got offered another job, higher pay, and I stay with them because my heart's with them. They treat my kids like family. Um, over the pandemic, I single mom. Val, there she is. Texted me every week to make sure I'm okay and told me that Steve is there if he, if I need anything, he's there to help me. You don't get that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. supervisory personnel who can manage all that in a school district that has three or four thousand kids. So if I've overstepped, because you're looking at a bid that's all guesstimates, please fill me in. Thank you. Oh, 
Welcome, Austin, from um, Burst for PIA. And basically, first I was going to say I'm um, happy Asian American Pacific Islander Month as well as Jewish American Pacific Islander Month. I'm going to say that's not nice. Um, <laughs> one of the things I want to mention, I guess, like, since it is Asian American and Pacific Islander Month, that one of the first concerns I want to bring before up is the top killer of Asian Americans between the ages of 15 and 34 is suicide. It is the number two killer for African Americans in that same age group. I want people to be aware of that the thing is the things like discrimination, racism, that people face in the school district, it is not to go unheard or just unnoticed like another issue. The thing is so much about I guess the voice of the concerns that the bus drivers have been talking about. Because I remember um, when I was in eighth grade, there was a bus driver and she realized that there was a student by the knife. She drove us to the police station as people called it the D word and it insulted her through different comments that her told her back. And after she drove to the police station, they figured out what happened. The students were all silent. She quit her job the next day because of how people mistreated her. I feel like that's something that has people of color you can relate to. They're just believing bus drivers are being mistreated constantly. I was a student child that got a water gun on his bus driver before. These kind, of, I guess, like, these kind of things that the bus drivers are experiencing are also things that students of color are experiencing in the movement. It goes unnoticed, no one really seems to care because they say it's critical race theory. But the thing is, here's something about a theory. A theory is a supposition or idea not backed by historical evidence. History is backed by historical evidence, and the thing is, it's really not a theory. Critical race theory is in front of the school. They don't even really teach history, I guess, like African Americans, Asian Americans, people probably don't, so I don't think that we teach critical race theory. Also, another issue that we should talk about, I guess, like 9 11 and Holocaust remembrance. We constantly bring up these different issues in our community, and it's important to do so, don't you agree? But we do not talk about issues like slavery, we don't talk about issues of um, the Japanese internment camps, we ignore all of it. These are all things that are part of our culture, and it's important to bring them up. And it's not to make people feel guilty, it's to bring us together as a community. We can all relate to some of these things. There are times in our history that all of us have to make discrimination or some form of pressure. So I think it's important that we bring these things up, not just sweep them on your liberal day as if they're unimportant. And I think it's important to also walk in someone else's shoes. Maybe walk in the shoes of the, of the bus drivers, also in the shoes of students of color as well. And also, I guess it's kind of important to note that, I guess, like, um, I guess, like, Kind of like how I guess they were talking about how um, the notice was brought to the bus drivers. Also in the case of diversity, I remember seeing, I guess like I was looking for um, different diversity comments. And for many years, if you couldn't really find any of the links or notices on diversity until really Mr. Flowers got there. And I know some people in the community were saying that Mr. Flowers was grooming them or something like that. He really wasn't. Because we've actually been like dealing with some of these issues before even Mr. Flowers was here, and that's important to look again. But I think it's just important to know that the thing is, we can't just keep ignoring these issues that are coming up in our community. And it's not even like it's just something that people of color are facing. People who are economically disadvantaged are facing the same thing. The bus drivers are facing the same thing. We need to bring up all these topics and should not scoop another one on the road because we don't think it's important. Thank you. <laughs> students 
all under the name of inclusion, using tactics like Maduro and using marginalized people. I can say that I'm a person of color and I do have experiences. It was brought to my attention that there was a gathering um, of students only inviting black, brown, and people of color to a meeting, excluding anyone else to join. That is self-segregation and is racist. We have also seen two recent incidences where kids have taken matters into their own hands while pouring milk on students, and this last instance hit a kid with a lunch tray because they thought what the child said was interpreted as homophobic or transphobic. That is assault and battery, and parents should pursue charges. I guess my question to you is, is how is the DE and IV program really faring out? I've given you names like Mrs. Shakima Townsend, founder, founder and former CEO of Philadelphia Youth Network, as well as Carol Conklin, New York State Education Consultant, who have track records of bringing diverse students into unity without implementation of Marxism. I highly recommend pursuing other programs that can unify the student body, no matter the race, gender, ethnicity, religion, when kids deserve this opportunity. I just want to really quickly say that thank you to all the community members today who spoke in favor of our local bus companies who do so much for Jane Green Area School District. And now I'm going to talk about another issue other than transportation. So officially good evening and thank you so much for having me. My name is Brianna Lee and I'm a senior at Jane Green Area High School. So I want to make it very clear that students are not responsible for providing solutions to prevent discrimination. Students are not often in positions of power that would allow us to enact policies or inclusive curriculum that would ultimately benefit our students. Instead, there should already be guaranteed a safe school environment for all students to thrive. We do not deserve to learn and or not deserve to learn in a hostile school environment. Students should not be going to school and feeling unsafe in their classrooms. There needs to be a support system and a proper resources provided for students who are in need of them. While I understand that Mr. Flowers is responsible for community relations in our school district, I would also like to see other administrators step in and provide support for students of color. 
please stop hiding behind this curtain of confidentiality because it is hurting students in our school district. I'm extremely concerned and frustrated that our school district only takes action when there is public pressure to do the right thing. We should be preventing the next lawsuit and the next newspaper article by helping students feel recognized for getting support for their safety. Please do not hide these issues under the rug and please confront the problem of racial discrimination in our school district. Administrators and school board members, I am asking you all to have the courage to take action. For the last few meetings, several of my peers and I had the courage to speak out about our experiences. The five of us who regularly attend these meetings are a very small proportion of the actual number of students who have felt unsafe and threatened in our school community. Students are scared in our school district and do not feel safe enough to share their experiences of trauma. And for those who have this year, I am so proud of them. And I understand that the end of the school year is now approaching. However, it is never too late for action. Even after I graduate from Daniel Boone, there will be a continuous need for a safe space in our school. Eventually, our school district will need to integrate a safe space into our schools or eliminate the need for a safe space by making the whole school district a place that actively includes and protects all minority students, regardless of race, gender, social economic status, academic status, sexual orientation, or differing intellectual and physical abilities. All students at Daneben Area School District deserve to feel included and have a sense of belonging. Despite years of experiencing racial trauma and emotional trauma from Danny Boone's unsafe school environment, I share my experiences to let other students know that they are not alone in their struggles. If the administration does not act towards change, we will be failing our Blazer community Thank students you. for not providing inclusive school environments. Thank you. Hi, my name is Caroline Ducray. I live in Douglasville. 
I spoke about TikTok before and I outlined the issues with the social media platform, which I've also provided a copy of the board to remind you. Um, today, I haven't heard anything about how the school's addressing this. Um, as you know, TikTok is just one of the many toxic social media platforms that promotes swearing, sexual conduct, inappropriate dance moves, nearly naked underage girls, body shaming, cyberbullying, and contact with strangers. There's many more disturbing issues of which I find offensive because they go against my religious beliefs, such as the normalization of transgender. I have sat and listened to the students who attend and complained that nothing's been done by the school board to combat the racial issues at Daniel Boone. It is my opinion that Daniel Boone does not really have a racial issue, but more of a bullying issue. The students use their phones as a weapon of bullying. Um, this female students that have attended and complained about the issues, they have experiences, they're real, they're valid, and I sympathize with their frustrations. I have kids in the district and I have had issues with my kids. Um, a lot of the excuse that the school likes to use is it's off school grounds, it's on social media, they can't really do anything about it. And that is frustrating for the kids. Um, if students weren't permitted to have their phones with them constantly in school, a lot of this problem would go away. Um, the rules actually do say that kids should have their phones in their lockers. Um, I can tell you that's not being enforced. I actually got the newsletter from the middle school web at the meeting tonight, and there was a section in the newsletter reminding students that their phones should remain in the locker. I think a lot of the problems could be solved if the phones weren't in the kids' hands all the time. I know for a fact they use them to cheat. Um, I just wish the, maybe, maybe we could try enforcing the rules that are in place with the phones and maybe it would cut down a lot on this whole bullying, hazing, racial problem that we're having. I know that poor child who had her photo airdropped, it would have never happened if the kids didn't have their phones in their hands. Maybe they could concentrate on actually learning. Unsafe, uncomfortable, and straight up miserable. 
I shouldn't have to feel unsafe at school. I shouldn't have to suppress my emotions to cater towards racists. I'm a human. I have rights, just like anyone else, to safety and to express my emotions freely at school. The school's lack of action and response towards racism has made me even more distrustful of the administration, and I am sure that I am not the only one in this room who feels that way. I feel that even if I do my part and report, I believe that the offender will get zero repercussions, that they won't actually learn and realize why their actions hurt me. Then I, when I am thrown into these discriminatory, discriminatory situations, I feel mentally and physically unsafe, and I am not insane for thinking that way. Every time I open up the news, I am dreadful to see what Asian elder, sister, brother, mother, father, child, <coughs> human being is killed, assaulted, or hate crime. These hate crimes don't stem from nowhere. They stem from racist individuals who internalize stereotypes, racist individuals who never were corrected or checked. Stereotypes kill, and I can be next. This does not pertain to just Asian people. This is applicable to all marginalized groups, black, Latina, queer, trans, disabled, all of them. So someone said last evening that we were bitching and said that we didn't provide any solutions. I have been in this room for months demanding the administration implement anti-racist curriculum in education so that racist individuals can be corrected, so that another minority doesn't have to die because the <coughs> education system failed. Maybe you weren't listening hard enough, or maybe you didn't actually want to make things better for us. I am sick and tired. These meetings take a toll on my mental health. They destroy my optimism and hope for this world. Because every time I go to these meetings, I am facing what I fear the most, bigotry. It's graduation soon, and I feel nothing but anger and disdain towards the administration. And I feel nothing but sorrow towards my peers of color. I'm remorseful that I couldn't do anything worthwhile during my time here to help make their lives easier. Thank you. But my hope is that they will continue to fight and push for what is right. Thank you. Thank you. Policies are failing. 
I believe it is because we teach the children to pass the Keystone exams so they can graduate and the district gets funding instead of actually teaching them to read, write, and do arithmetic. There has also been an increased focus on social and emotional learning and equity awareness. The fundamental job of the public school system is to teach, teach the skills of reading, writing, arithmetic, science, and history. More and more, I recently, I am seeing a trend towards the school district focusing on teaching about morality, sexuality, and personal Thank responsibility. You. It is the responsibility of the parents to teach morality, sexuality, and personal responsibility. While some parents have not done a good job with this, the schools should be trying, not trying to override their parents' ability to teach their children. We need to focus on the fundamental skills and keep uh, parents with what they're doing. Thank you.
and the oppressed and undermine and underpin identity politics. It seeks to solve concerns about racial inequality, but instead of solving problems, it creates new ones. True. CRT promotes a belief that America is a fundamentally racist country that all of our institutions are designed to maintain white supremacy. CRT sees every human relationship in terms of a race-based power struggle. It sees institutions like law, education, and business as the main source of racial problems. Critical race theory rejects individual freedom and personal responsibility. It divides people into racial groups, pits the groups against each other, and judges guilt or innocence based on race. This threatens the best ideals of the American founding. We are the land of the free with unlimited opportunity. We fight toxic ideologies like CRT by sharing the truth and promoting opportunities that allow every person the American dream. Um, and that is cited by the Heritage Foundation. And for those that don't know, critical theory is a Marxist-inspired movement in social and political philosophy originally associated with the work of the Frankfurt School, drawing particularly on the thought of Karl Marx and Sigmund Freud. Critical theorists maintain that a primary goal of a philosophy is to understand and to help under overcome the true stu structures um, through which are dominated and oppressed. So that is what your tax dialers are paying for, folks. We don't get a salary. We don't get paid. We don't get paid at all. I, I know you do not. Oh. And I know who does. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, then I went, I feel like I, I very much. Sorry, I misunderstood you. I thought you were insinuating that I was being paid. No, I. I if not, you, somebody will be a lot. I appreciate those of you very much who are not. No, okay. Yeah. And are here. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. And I've been here a really long time. I just. <laughs> got it. Um, I appreciate that the voting was delayed tonight because I believe everything was presented very sneakily. Um, and I appreciate numbers being allowed to be put out there, as you so eloquently put earlier, that do not have to be. If I had a gold star, I would present you with one. I'm trying not to get heated, like I said earlier. I don't want to be somebody who does that. Um, I shop discount. My fear is that the new shiny thing in town is not always going to be the new and shiny thing in a few years. Um, by then, businesses we currently use could be gone, and you'll have new options, you'll be stuck. Uh, you'll have to approve the new rates or less desirable contracts being offered because the options that you have now might not be around. Um, when it comes to my kids' safety, there is no discount. I love Costco. It's different. I'll go to TJ Maxx. It's different when it comes to my children. I'll pay more when it comes to my kids' safety. You mentioned that you have grandkids. Um, I know other people here have children that they put on the bus every day. You could argue that new buses would provide, provide better safety. Um, I argue that knowledgeable staff provide safety. Um, will all of the buses being provided by this new company be brand new? I don't know if I missed that earlier. Um, I have three girls. Two are school aged, I put them on bus each and every day because I trust the people behind that wheel. I trust the companies that have proven to get my children to and from school safely since the start of school. I trust Cindy, who's not here tonight, but made my daughter, who is in kindergarten this year, smile every day when she would get on that bus in tears, shaking, because she cared. And I'm not saying other people wouldn't care. I'm just saying this is my personal experience. 
She didn't have to do that. She didn't have to make sure she was okay every day. Her job was just to get her to school. But she does more than that. I trust Sydney, who takes my third grader to school and from school every day, who, when kids are unkind and there is bullying, has changed seats and made other people aware of the situation so they would be handled because she cares. Not because she has to, but because she takes those kids into her care every day and takes that very sorry. Spot. I'm sorry. Okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> By a show of hands, can I get an idea how many more people want to speak? I'm trying to decide if I want to call a recess for like a brief minute. If, if it's just really two, then no, I don't have to. Okay, go ahead. I apologize. Courtney Rose, Thank you. It's really simple. We shouldn't even be here right now. It should just be a simple decision. These two men right here are the hardest working men that I know especially the one sitting right here. Um, they have devoted literally, I'm gonna reiterate it, literally their entire lives to this business. The fact that you would even entertain a company that's been, what, in business for six years, that's downright embarrassing. And that's, that's just very embarrassing. And, um, so the decision should just be plain and simple and that's all I have. sincere in saying that, but, um, but I, I do appreciate that, you know, everybody here has um, um, the um, op opportunity to come and uh, talk to us about what you guys want to, to discuss with the board. This is what this time is for, so I do appreciate it. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Can I get a, a second from Ms. Godfrey? And we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Yeah.